We have these common criteria for judging the worth of theories, whether they're theories of science, history, or anything else. The theory is probably true insofar as if it's true, you would expect the data. If it's false, you wouldn't expect the data, and it's a simple theory. And we can judge religions by these criteria. The first issue is, is there a God? Not all religions believe there's a God or think that is important for them. And therefore the issue is, do the arguments for the existence of God render it probable that there is a God? I think they do. Um, and I think the simplest explanation of the uh, existence of the universe, its conformity to uh, order, the laws of nature being such as to lead to our evolution, the existence of consciousness and so on, are uh, such as satisfy these criteria. So uh, that will rule out the non-theistic religions, such as Buddhism or various forms of Hinduism. And that will leave us with the theistic religions, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, certain forms of Hinduism, and so on. Now, how do they differ? Well, they differ in the properties they ascribe to God and in the actions that they ascribe to God. So we must look at the evidence as to whether God does have these properties and whether God has done these actions. But the main uh, criterion for distinguishing between them is that all such religions proclaim that God has made a revelation of to human beings. So uh, how are we to compare competing revelations? The answer is, uh, if, any, uh, if taken analogy, uh, if you receive a, a letter from, from somebody which tells you something, um, you uh, need to uh, find out who it's from. And if we can find out that the revelation comes from God, then that is reason to suppose it's true. How would you find out that it comes from God? Well, we uh, authenticate letters by their handwriting and their signature. What sort of things are signatures of God? Well, there's one thing that God alone can do, uh, and that is alter the, or intervene in, violate the laws of nature. Uh, if an event occurs which is contrary to the laws of nature, which involves setting aside the laws of nature, then that can only be done by the person who keeps the laws of nature operative. And if um, a revelation has a signature on it in the form of an event which God alone can bring about, then that is reason to suppose that the uh, revelation is true. Now, I think Christianity is uniquely positioned in this respect because the signature in question is the resurrection of Jesus. If this occurred as traditionally asserted, then clearly it was a violation of the law of nature. Is, is it possible that God could give conflicting revelations to different groups? Well, not if you reveal certain propositions and uh, he says to one, uh, God is uh, a trinity, and he says to another, God is not a trinity, then clearly one of these must be false. But um, if we're considering theistic religions, they've got an awful lot in common. But of course they do differ, and in particular in that example, the doctrine of the trinity is denied in the Quran explicitly, and affirmed in Christianity, so there is a conflict here.